Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Electrical Forensics and we're here to talk about stray voltage. And stray voltage is very well known in the dairy industry. Very well known to make farmers, the families and the animals sick. And it does it at very low voltages. And we're going to talk about this article. It's available on my website. And you can download this particular page and read it. And it's called Relationship of Electric Power Quality to Milk Production of Dairy Herds. Field Study with Literature Review. Uh, the abstract states, public utility commissions in several states adopted a 0 0.5 volt RMS root mean squared or 1 milliampere as the actionable limit for utilities to respond to complaints of uncontrolled voltage. This study clearly shows that the actionable level should be reduced to 10 millivolts peak to peak, which is 140 times less than the current standard. And then we come down here, it states PUC standards and use of 500 ohm resistors in test circuits underestimate the effects of non-sinusoidal higher frequency voltage and current common on rural power lines. So basically what they're saying is this effect has been known for decades. It's definitely making biological organisms sick, including the human. And the standards that are currently set are way too high. And books have started appearing that discuss this concept. And Sam Milham's book, Dirty Electricity, is one of those books. And he's finding very similar findings to that article. And there's another book that's reporting very similar findings around wind turbines. So it's been noticed that when wind turbines get installed into an area that people start becoming sick. And then they look at the grounding systems and they find these stray voltage effects all over the grounding system. And this is probably the leading book on the subject right now, Electrocution of America, is your utility out to kill you by Russ Allen. And he states very clearly that not only did his animals get sick, but so did his family. And he was seeing all kinds of weird stuff in his family with exposure to the stray voltage effects. Now, I want to clear up one of the misconceptions regarding stray voltage. And that's this resistor. So this resistor, you typically put a resistor in to the circuit between your positive and ground lead and that is supposed to put a load on the circuit and what this what this actually represents is a wet dairy cow this is not a human this is a wet dairy cow and it's a shock test it's not a long-term voltage exposure test so the idea of this resistor is that it loads the circuit and then you can detect if the voltage is high enough to cause a shock or an electrocution of the animal that stops the animal's heart. So these stray voltage effects are occurring at much lower current levels and much lower voltage levels with long-term exposure. And this resistor is somewhat of an outdated standard. Um, I have to agree with the contents of this article. This article very clearly states that the 500 ohm resistor in test circuits underestimates the effects of non-sinusoidal higher frequency voltage current common on rural power lines. So this leads me into this book. So this is Health Forensics. And you'll notice on the cover, we have a tree and a bedroom. And the interesting thing is about this tree is it's planted in an area of stray voltage. And the interesting thing about the bedroom is if you sleep in that bedroom when the tree was there, you would get very weird dreams. And you would wake up feeling very fatigued and you'd be fatigued all day long. And I've actually slept in this bedroom and I could only take it for a week before I actually had to get out of that bedroom because the bedroom was so toxic from the emissions that the tree was giving in. And it's a very well known effect. You know, trees as antenna systems was documented over a hundred years ago when they were developing radio. They were using the trees 
as radio frequency antenna systems and they were transmitting and receiving through the tree. So trees emitting electromagnetic interference, which is what radio is, is not a new concept. It's been known for over a hundred years and uh, I certainly was detecting the problem at my home and that's what this cover is about. But the interesting thing that I'm finding is that I've been reporting this to the utility since 2011 because I have a very high voltage on my grounding system during air conditioning season. And this also comes into health forensics because people are known in the US to go nuts in summertime. You know, it's been very well documented for decades that, you know, violence increases in summertime. And that matches the fact that the Shroy voltage peaks in the US during summer because of the air conditioning loads. The more air conditioning systems that are added to the system, the more the stray voltage rises on the system and the more weird frequency effects are riding around on the grounding system and the more electrified concrete and tile floors are that are connected into electrical grounding systems. So it's a very diverse field and there's a lot of denial. I've been trying to get my utility company to fix the stray voltage problem that's at my property that I started detecting in 2011. And um, it's 2014 now, and they're still denying it. And I've yet to see them perform a single measurement of my property that would demonstrate the presence of stray voltage. So if you've got a stray voltage problem, you've got a problem uh, because most utilities are trying to cover it up. It's an inconvenient truth. And unfortunately, it's an inconvenient truth that if it's not fixed, you may actually be quite sick from all the weird EMI emissions coming off the trees, off the plants, off your tile floors, off your concrete floors, and coming off your grounding system. It goes all over your water system if you have copper plumbing. And uh, yeah, if you're getting sick in summertime, you should probably have your home tested by a competent engineer for stray voltage effects. So that's stray voltage for you, clearing up the misconceptions. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.